Egypt. Where are you from? I'm from Amsterdam. Oh, I was born there. What? Yeah, in The Hague, I was born there. No, so you're born in the Netherlands. This Leven means life, right? Leven. <laughs> My God. <laughs> are we rolling? <laughs> you're listening to Jothi and Life Kali. This is Ooh. mad. This is, forget about Life Jennings. It's all about, I did not know you were born in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. And so I, I can actually pronounce your name better than anyone. It's Leif. Yeah. Yeah, Leif Kali. Whoa. That's how your name's supposed you to be pronounced. Can you say it one more time? Leif That's crazy. I love that. It sounds beautiful. What was your mom doing in the Netherlands? Um, she was on tour with my father. So my dad, um, he was in a band called Mother's Finest. Okay. And... You know, they were on tour in Western Europe, and my mom was pregnant and wanted to be with him when it happened. So that's how it happened. I was born on tour. My mind's actually blown because this is just like a next level connection we've made now. There we go. Because the thing is, I feel like you very often have to spell out your name because clearly people get it wrong oh, all yeah, the time. I get all sorts of things. What do people say usually? They hit me with like Levin, they hit me with Levon. Levon. They hit me with uh, Levin. Levin. What what do they say? They say like um, I don't know. I like Levon. Levon. There there's a bunch. Anything you could imagine, I've heard it. David. People just. <laughs> <laughs> That's disrespectful. Yeah, bad. That's just like. Yeah, horrible. But your name no. should be David. That's what people. But say. I like how you say it. You say it the best. Thank you. I am the best. <laughs> After you. See what I'm saying? There we go. We're best friends now. Exactly. We're the, we're the best best friends. Your your top, my trousers. If we just either you wore my trousers or I wear your top, it's we're magic. Just, we're just like two halves make a whole. Exactly. Okay, calm down. It's a bit much inappropriate. Let's talk about Low Tide. Okay. Why the name Low Tide? Um. So, the band is called the Moon. So it's yeah. Laven Kali and the Moon, right? And the Moon controls the tides. Yes. And for me, it represents like. We, you know, having this fascination with going to outer space and connecting and being with the stars and all that stuff. But on Earth, we don't even really know about the ocean like that. And it's kind of like we don't really know about ourselves before we're trying to reach out and do interviews and be mm -hmm. popping. So it's kind of like taking the time to recognize your own low tides and high tides before you, like, go to space. That's nice. There's a lot of thought that went into that. It kind of just hit me. Really? You're yeah. just like... You're I just, just made that up right now. No, you're no. just one <laughs> So creative. This is just what I do. Let's talk about the album because you dropped an EP first before this. There was like a three track. Kind of. I, I wouldn't call it an EP. I would call would Low call Tide it? an EP to be honest because those, you know, you see how music is coming out nowadays. Mm -hmm. People are putting like, you know, two songs out here, two songs out there. Yeah. And it's really just depending on, you know, iTunes and Spotify, however much time you put. Yeah. They'll say it's an EP or an album or this or that. So uh -huh. that three song joint that I put out, they called it an EP just because of technicalities, but we just wanted to put three songs out at the same time. Right. And then it's it, it gets kind of hard to correct everybody every time, so I just rolled with it at a certain point. I was like, yeah, 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 thank you. Because I've lost count now, because an EP used to be no more than five tracks, but now people put out seven tracks. I think it's, it's by minutes now with Spotify. Okay, so right? Spotify's just controlling lives. Something like that. Yeah, so it's like under 26 minutes or something like that, under 25 minutes. But yeah, Low Tide um, was like really my, I wanted that to be like my like uh, my mixtape or like my my like uh, just sort of like statement, not really like a album album because it's really just the songs that I've been kind of living with these last like year and a half, two years that I've been kind of going through this like this shit. What do you imagine your real album to be like then? I want to, um, I want to get, so Low Tide is part one of part two. It's Low Tide and High Tide. Right. And then after that, I really want to take my time to create something, you know, from the bottom up, just like from scratch, really, because a lot of these songs I've had for so long, you know, mm -hmm. and it's, I mean, my hard drive is just like full of stuff that I really want people to hear. But for the album, I want to do something that's like, you know, maybe maybe conceptual just... and from the start and and not just the stuff I've been having around. And, right. Not to say the low tide didn't have new stuff. I made like none wrong and a bunch of songs like very recently, but for you know half that project, there's some joints on there that I've been living with for a while. I want to ask you the worst question you can ask someone who's made a project. Perfect. If you had to take one song off the album, what song would you have to take off? The intro, because I ain't singing on it. I don't know. So, <laughs> so smart. Something That's like smart. that. Favorite track on the album, and why? 
Um, I really like a song called My Offer, and it's um, it's kind of like a jazz, um, bossa South American influenced um song that is like a three minute musical piece before I even come in and sing on it, and it just is a little bit of a different vibe than what you're used to hearing, I guess, on R and B and hip hop projects. What do you think has happened to the hype of Lady Kali in the last year? Because for a lot of people who might not know, you've actually been around for a minute. You've written for a lot of, a lot of people. We've been able to hear you in 2017 on Playboy Cardi's project. Yeah. Give me a quick little rundown of people that you've worked with, written for, toured, toured with, that a lot of mm. people who just know you from Low Tide wouldn't know. So a little bit of London love. I opened for Craig David in 2017. Big. That was big. That was amazing. Thank you. Craig, the man. Um, That's kind of legendary. Super legendary. <laughs> um, some more London love, S.G. Lewis. We did some shows on his tour. He's amazing. Who do you think impacted you the most working with? Um, when I worked with Sid, it was really dope going to her house because she had a, uh, a really nice vocal chain. That means, like, um, you know, her microphone is plugged into, like, whatever equipment that then goes into her computer. Right. And I recorded the house as well, but I didn't have a vocal chain by, like, at, at that time, and that inspired me to get that, and it's changed everything for me. So thank you, Sid, for putting me on to the nice vocal chain. You know, it's, it's R&B-ish music, so it turns into an R&B-ish gig. Ish. You were wearing a Lakers jersey, mm -hmm. which means it's quite breathable. Right. Your arms are out. Yep. Yet you were so hot you felt the need to take it off at the end of the show. It was hot. That was disrespectful. You were in there. It was hot. Right? I, it, you, my friends lost their mind. Yeah. Everyone started screaming. I couldn't even film you anymore because all the cameras went up. There we go. Do you work out to do these things? I do. Yeah. Is it just? But not just for this, to Don't be lie. honest. To Levin, be, no, Levin, no, 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 look, no, no, look no, no. me in the eye. Stop, stop lying to me. Look, I love it. I, I've been really trying to be on my grind lately because I realized that if I'm going to do a 40 minute, you know, to an hour long set mm -hmm. and I want to sing and like give the crowd my soul, I got to have the energy to do it. Mm. So it's not even to look pretty. It's to it's to be able to sing and like have energy, you know, and then in the process, you just end up looking like a snack, a snack or a whole <laughs> meal, according to some. There we OK, go. I won't be mad at that. I was just maybe I'm just jealous because it's been a long time I've looked like that. <laughs> my abs have gone missing a couple oh, of man. years ago it's okay now we've got people <laughs> like you to do it for me there we go and then you can sing and i'll just stand there with my this is off. the thing <laughs> see that's what it is you got the looks and i've got <laughs> well, <laughs> something else i guess how do you deal with female attention i i love i love female attention i love that it's it's nothing it's nothing too crazy no it's, yeah no you sure i have no like stalkers or anything like that like no. <laughs> who's cassandra a very special lady as well so I was, uh, when I made that song, I was really hungry. Mm -hmm. And I was with my friend Droid, who's an incredible producer, songwriter. And it was not too late. It was pretty early in the day, actually. And we ordered pizza off Postmates. You guys have Postmates out here? We Well, we I know what Postmates is. It's kind of like a delivery. It's like DoorDash or, or delivery. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The Postmates name was Cassandra. So the whole song is about getting pizza and needing it right now. And, oh, she's getting closer <laughs> and watching the app bring it closer. This is amazing. Yeah. And then actually the track that follows on the album mm -hmm. is... Cassandra Backwards. B exactly. Yeah. What's that all about? Um, it kind of sounds like it's just kind of flipped, you know? So it looked like that was the right thing to do with the name. If you ever had to leave LA, where would you live? Here. Really? London? I like London a lot. Would you like I, I want to spend time here and I want to spend more time in the Netherlands. I haven't been there since I was like 15. Right. And... Um, I was recently in Toronto for the first time. That was amazing. You love Toronto. I could see that yeah. on your Twitter. You were just you. It blew me away, to be honest. Just it, just the way it looks. It looks so clean and fresh, and mm. the people all look like kind of like us in here. Like we all look like you know what I mean. Like it's just it was like an amazing, just like melting pot of like clean dopeness. Mm. What's the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened on stage? Way back in the day, I fell one time Ugh. like I like there was a monitor on the on the stage and I like tried to like get over it and I just kind of fell but it wasn't terrible it was like no and that's it was like embarrassing a, like, it was embarrassing <laughs> see this is the trick right when something really embarrassing happens in life or on stage mm -hmm. 
you just got to play it off and pretend like it was on purpose. Yes, part or of the do, process. Right, so we've had like festival shows where it's really hot and then the DJ's computer like overloads. Whoa! And then we have to pretend like, you know, <laughs> the song still goes on. So I'll do like some acapella shit. In That's the crowd. mad. And then sometimes we'll have a show in the, oh my God, uh, we did the selection show and the and they cut us off and the sound crew came on and started taking the drum set apart Whoa. during our last song. Whoa. And when you, you know about the in-ears on stage? Yeah. So I'm wearing my in-ears on stage and the song is going in my head. So I'm like, I'm like, yeah, like, and everyone's starting to cheer. And I'm like, hell yeah, they like, love this. they love this shit. And I'm just like looking out and I'm singing my heart out. And then I, 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 someone touches me on my shoulder and I look back and the whole sound crew was like, get the fuck <laughs> off. Like, <laughs> nice. Like took the cymbal off the drum set. The people in the crowd was being like, oh my God, he's too they legit were like to booing, quit. They were booing security and they were like cheering for us. It was So it ended up, see, ended up great. It Could have been foul, but it was cool. Love seems to play a central theme for sure. in your music in many different ways, not just from a man to a woman, but also with, your friends and spending time with, the with your friends, getting high with your friends yeah. and the love for that. Love is a theme that never gets old right. and it never will get old. Right. What is a theme that you would like to explore but you maybe haven't in your music? Oh, that's a cool question. Um, I don't know. I feel like everything kind of boils down to love at some point, right? Mm. So it's like I, I want to talk about love in different ways. If you weren't a musician, what would you be doing? I used to play golf, so I'd be doing that for sure. Well. I did not know this. Okay, yeah. I was I played golf in college. I got a scholarship to play in college. I was like pretty nice. What? Yeah, I used to be good at golf. I'm still all right. Really? I'm still all right. So that could always still be like Yeah, if it's if there. this if this falls through, <laughs> Tommy's gonna be my caddy and we're gonna go on tour <laughs> on on the on the golf course. Cute. Are you allowed to talk about the story of how you met your A and R? You basically went into a meeting that wasn't really about you. I was with somebody, I was writing music with somebody and they had their own um, uh, meeting at Interscope. Right. And I, they needed a ride, so I drove them over there and the whole plan was just, okay, bro, drive me through, you know, whatever, I'm gonna go talk to dude and we'll go back to the studio and finish up. So I drove them over there and I'm sitting on the couch just like this, they were talking over there. And the A and R looked at me and was like, "All right, dude. So what? You just drive, you know, you drive him around all day, or like what? Like what do you got going on?" And I showed him some of my music, and then he kind of lit up and he said, "Man, you guys would be a crazy duo." And this guy I had only met a day ago, not the A and R, but the if but the person I drove to. If you did that to my meeting, yeah. Oh my God. No, but it ended up great for him. For, oh, it worked out for him as well. It opened doors for all of us. Right. For it to be a group situation. Okay. And we kind of, you know, expanded on the truth and made it seem like we were already a group. Right. And that we had all these homies that were part of the band. And the high school I went to right. is called Crossroads, an amazing high school. What a name for a high school. Yeah, it's a very special place. And the, the jazz band there is, is killer. So I, I used to play drums in the jazz band. And the people that I called were all my friends from the jazz band. And I said, look, dude, like you know, the president of Interscope is going to come to the garage and watch us play, and they think we're a band. So pull up. What? Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah, and then they believed us, and we kept on going, and then, you know, some things happened, and then we're here. Things need to change sometimes to make things work. Right. That's amazing. He must yeah. have – why do you think he asked you that? Is it because of the way you look? Because you look like you wouldn't just be – Driving someone around? I don't know, dude. He must have had a feeling. God, he's great. What a great... Yeah, shout out Dash. Right, here we go. Yeah, Dash. there we go, Dash. We all love to Dash. Your props. At your concert. What I love to do, because I love going to R&B and soul gigs. Well, I mean, all other gigs as well. But what's fun is that there's always some sort of... There's an R&B manual that you go through. There's certain things singers do that other artists wouldn't always do. First of all, you tell the crowd many times of how beautiful they look. You guys look so beautiful tonight. Taking the shirt off, Tick did that. In the same venue you played, about five days ago, we saw Lucky Day, mm. who had on like a velvety jacket. And towards the end of the gig, I was like, is he not going, is this not coming? And then, yeah, there we go, last song. It got really hot. Yeah, it gets hot on the last song. On the last song, it just gets so hot. <laughs> it it's always mad. gets hot. I don't know what that is. The it gets light hot on engineer. the last song. Usually every show, outdoor show in the snow is hot. Last just, song. Last yeah. song is the sound engineers and light engineers do that. If I asked your band members what the most annoying thing is about you, what they what would they say? 
And maybe maybe like my diet. I don't know. I I, I don't like chicken anymore. Or I like chicken. I miss well, it, but I but I stopped eating chicken in the last couple months, and that kind of slows things down. If we, you know, out here you walk down the street and it's like chicken pizza, chicken pizza, chicken pizza. What's gonna make you stick around? The songs. The songs. The songs. The songs. Yeah, my songs. Like yeah. the, our songs. The What's songs. Different? The songs will live on forever. Be yeah. way longer than us. Does it worry you sometimes that we live in a time where music is just so saturated and fans are used to people? dropping a project every six months and if you don't then either they forget about you because there's 20 new artists out there who are trying to do the same thing or they just keep asking for it and then maybe you put out something under pressure that's not what you wanted how do you navigate this industry in this time you got to make timeless music you got you to make good timeless music and you go to you know certain shows and you see like um perfect example drake yeah. Before he gets into whatever album he's promoting, he runs through all his hits, and that's like half the show for like an hour. Yeah. And you're sitting there like, damn, dude has so many hits. Yeah. And, you know, he has timeless songs. So if people with timeless music, they'll be touring forever. What do you wish someone had told you about the industry before you got into it? Uh, to get the band in ears sooner. It's about about touring. Like yes. having those on stage made such a big difference for me, and I wasn't I wasn't even thinking about that for like the first year of doing this. Last question. For sure. Definition of success knowing your role in your community and playing that shit to the fullest and taking care of your people boom boom love it i love it Levin kali is for the people, people. Wait, say, wait say it say it the way you say it Levin kali the the dutch way Levin kali there we go <laughs> oh, that's this is how everyone should say it now please no excuses anybody else who's interviewing you later today just tell them like no you need to say it like jyoti said Levin kali Amazing. We got to get like a voice memo of you saying it like that because that's, that's going to be like my new like producer drop. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh my God. The Maybach yeah, music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lathan music. Oh. Yeah, there we go. You got to send me that sound I wanna bite. Listen, please, nah, please. I want to get my please. manager to talk to your manager. Don't worry <laughs> about it. There we go. You exactly. Thank you for your time. Thank you.